Well, here we are at the little waterfall. Looking real nice. Notice this structure right here. This is what miners call a dike, a natural dike, which is a fault that has formed a, uh, a barrier across the river. A very substantial barrier, which then has produced the waterfall. And you can see how this is a fault, especially as you look up the side of the hill here, and you can see how this, this uh, fault of material, this different material, has uh, propped up in this one spot and come perfectly across the river. This is an interesting little bridge that has been created along the trail next to the river. The reason for this is that it spans an excavation that you can see. There's poison oak in front of it. Or you can see better on this side right here how this excavation which was uh, right along the fault line has been cleared out by somebody in some mining operation in past years. You notice how cleanly this is uh, perhaps a, a vein that existed right in this area. And all the material has been removed Maybe there was some good gold there at one time. Anyhow, we're hoping there's still some gold a little bit further downstream. This is uh, Phil and Jeff. They've gone upstream now. And they're investigating to see if there's some good places to do some panning and collect some gravel and maybe a place to set up our sluice box. There's some fairly good conditions here base rock or the bedrock is exposed in a number of places which is good you want to be as close to the bedrock as possible to find gold oftentimes in rivers or streams the bedrock is covered by many feet of gravel sand and gravel but here it looks like It'll be fairly easy to get down to bedrock. Here's another look at the bedrock in the area. Any place where you find uh, cracks in the bedrock or holes, depressions, and that's filled up with a little gravel and sand, that's a good opportunity to clean those out because that's where the gold, if there's any gold, it's going to be down in the lowest possible point, which is typically one of these cracks or holes in the rock. Here's another really good look at a crack in the bedrock. Crack is fairly well cleaned out. That may mean someone else has been down here and has already prospected this particular area. But if that was full to the top with sand or gravel, that would be a great place to look for gold. There are some more pockets in the bedrock. A little bit of gravel in these pockets. All of these areas would be possible deposit sites for gold. Take a look at this rock formation right here. It's a long piece of rock. 
This could also be considered a dike. Runs right across, perpendicular to the river. Another really good place to look for gold. When the water flows over this, it creates a turbulence. And oftentimes the gold is caught up in that turbulence and drops out, settles down to the bottom. There's just another look at this, this dike. And you notice right there, in particular, that almost certainly has been an area that's been dug out by other miners that have been up here earlier. And right adjacent to that, there's another big hole that's been mostly cleaned out. So somebody's been looking for gold up here. And they picked a prime spot right there. There we are, working the gravel down through the classifier. There's just a screen over the top of this bucket. Once we get it screened down so all the big stones are out of it, he'll take it over to the sluice box, put it in there. Washing the stones really good in the water like this is important because they may have a dirt, clay stuck to them that would also contain gold. So we want to get the rocks real clean before we throw them away. Well, we're starting to work our sluice box now. You can see that we got it set up. We have a little dam around it to channel the water through the sluice box. Current looks like it's going about right. The tail end of the sluice box, it's out of the water, so we don't have any back pressure or buildup. Just gotta load some more material in it. You're on. Okay, we've got some concentrate or some material that's been screened. And we're going to add that to the sluice box. You don't want to do this too fast or too slow. Try to get the material to liquefy in the upper box. And if you can see the ripples in the box right here, here. They create a uh, little turbulence in the box that helps trap the uh, larger, heavier material. And then the miner's moss that's at the bottom of the box collects the real fine material.